Welcome to this episode of Family Matters. I'm delighted to be talking to you all today about families. Family is God's idea. And Satan always tries to oppose what God wants to bless. That is why we face a lot of issues and challenges in our family life. So we are here to help you and to support you. Call us, there's a number on the screen. You can post your prayer requests. You can also post some questions or challenges that you face in, in which we could be of help to you. This is a program in which we speak about marriage, we speak about parenting and all the other things that are related to families. And in today's topic, I thought I'll be discussing about financial blessings. We find that most of the family problems are because of financial crisis. Sometimes uh, it leads to even separation. So today, let's see how to receive financial blessings for the family. The Bible teaches us that Love of money is the root of all evil. At the same time, the Bible also teaches us that money is the answer to everything. In Ecclesiastes, we read this. So let's see what God has to teach us about finances. Um, I thought we will study the life of Jacob to see how God has uh, blessed Jacob and what principles we learn from his life. Let's turn to Genesis 32 and read verse 10. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 32 and let's read verse 10. I'm unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two groups. Jacob was actually a cheat. He was a deceiver. He left his family. He had to run away to his uncle's place. And there again, he, he had to, he was cheated by his uncle. And now God asked him to get back to where he, uh, his father lived. When he was coming back, he says, I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two groups. So God, he had nothing when he, when he went to his uncle's place. Now he was returning from his uncle's place and he has two groups now. What a great blessing, what a lot of wealth he has accumulated in the past 20 years. And these past 20 years, his uncle was not a very kind boss. He was a very difficult boss. Uh, he worked for his wife for 14 years and he worked for himself and his children just for six years and he was collecting all the wealth and he was going back. So God had blessed him with great wealth. So what do we learn from his life? Genesis chapter 31 reading from verse 1. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything from our father, owned and had gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and I will be with you. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out to the fields where his flocks were. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it was before. But the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have worked for your father with all my strength. Yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, 
God has not allowed him to harm me. If he said the speckled ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to speckled young. And if he said the streaked ones will be your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked young. So God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. If we go on reading, he says, I am the God who brought you out of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now this, leave this land at once and go back to your native land. So the first thing that we find here, the prince of Jacob became a very wealthy man. He was blessed financially. Uh, Laban's sons are saying he has so much more than us. Laban also, his attitude and his face changed, his expression changed because God blessed Jacob. So, how, what are the principles that we learn from this uh, incident in the life of Jacob? The first thing that we know is he heard from the Lord and he obeyed. So the first principle is for you to gain wealth, to have financial blessing. Hear from the Lord. Even when he was working for Laban, if you read verse 10 onwards, you will find that God is guiding him so that his wealth will be multiplied. So always hear from God. That will bring you financial blessing. And when you hear from God, always remember to obey him. That's the first principle that we learn from this incident. The second thing that we learn is that when God asked him to make a move, when he was, do, was deciding to make a change, when he was changing, when he was trying to go from one place to another, his business in Laban's house, he is closing down and he is going back to his father's place. So when he was doing that, he discussed it clearly with Leah and Rachel. So what is the principle that we learn from this? Always every, in every family, both husband and wife should join together, so should discuss with each other and make decisions of the finances that we have. In saving the money, in whatever we do with finances, it has to be discussed. A collective decision has to be made. In many families, there is financial crisis which leads to many other conflicts because sometimes the wife doesn't know what the husband's doing, the husband doesn't know what the wife is doing and nowadays we find that both husband and wife are working and if they pool the money together, there will be a greater benefit. But uh, many, in many of the families, this is not there. So, for, we must always remember that a collective decision is to be made regarding the finances. Whatever decision we make, we should remember that every, the husband knows what we are doing and the wife also knows what the husband is doing. That's the first thing that we learn from Jacob. Jacob lived so many years ago, so many thousands of years ago. In those days, women were not given any uh, prominence. But still, Jacob is discussing and making the decision with the concern of his wives. So that is one thing that we should always remember. In modern times, when both husband and wife are working, or when the husband's working, or when the wife alone is working, whoever brings the income to the family, every decision to be made should be discussed with each other. That's the most important thing that we should remember when we are uh, talking about our finances. Any finance, financial decision we make in the families should be made collectively as a husband and wife. One person cannot decide to spend or save. So when he, after he discussed with his wives, both his wives understand what the father has done to Jacob. 
there was clear understanding so they were not complaining that he was taking them away from the father they also gave consent if you read verse 14 and 15 in genesis chapter 31 shall we read that then rachel and leah replied both of them were always arguing fighting doing things like that but when it came to a decision that jacob was discussing with them both of them replied together do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate does he not regard us as foreigners not only has he sold us but he has used up what was paid for us Surely all the wealth that God took away from our father belongs to us and our children so do whatever God has told you both Leah and Rachel are in one mind encouraging Jacob to follow what God has told Jacob this is how we need to discuss with within the members of the family and come to a consensus to listen to what god has called us to do or what god has told us to do then jacob makes the decision and puts his children and its things on the camels and they leave so that's the second first principle here from the lord second discuss with your wife with your family members may come to a consensus and then make uh, financial decisions he leaves this land on camel then the next principle that i feel that we should learn from this incident is do not hide anything from your spouse regarding the finances or your wealth do not hide anything there should be no secrets there should be a no second account or there should be no secret account because we find that when rachel leaves her father's house she collects the idols from her father without her father knowing it and brings it along with jacob she did not reveal this to him you know the story you know the incident she did not reveal this to him so after a few days laban finds out that his idols were missing so he comes back follows uh, jacob in chapter 31 of genesis and verse 19 we read when laban had gone to shear his sheep rachel stole her father's household gods and laban comes back to jacob and the only complaint that he makes to jacob is given in verse 30 now you have gone off because you long to return to your father's house but why did you steal my gods that was the only complaint laban could make against jacob so when there was some and jacob here answered laban i was afraid because i would i thought you would take your daughters now jacob did not know that rachel had stolen the gods so he was challenging jacob was challenging laban but finally somehow rachel sat on the idols and she escaped the father's wrath so don't have any secrets between your the husband and the wife when you are using regarding the finance for everything it may it is for everything but especially for finances to have a great financial blessing and in uh, genesis chapter 35 and verse 2 we read that jacob when he met the angels he had to sanctify his household he had to throw all the idols into a pit so that is how when we have secrets it will have a greater bad effect on our finances so the next thing that we should remember first thing hear from god obey him second thing discuss with the husband and the wife should discuss together the family members and make a decision thirdly there should be no secrets in using finances and the fourth one we read about uh, jacob in chapter 31 genesis chapter 31 if you turn to verse 38 
38 and 39 we read i have been with you for 20 years now your sheep he is talking to laban your sheep and goats have not miscarried nor have i eaten rams for your flocks i did not bring you animals torn by wild beasts i bore the loss myself and you demanded payment from me for whatever was stolen by day or night this was my situation so he says uh, the heat consumed me in the daytime and cold at night and sleep fled from my eyes this talks about responsibility and hard work we can have financial blessing when we are responsible and we are hard working in the proverbs 31 24 we read about the virtuous woman she is so hard working you know she is involved in businesses she is involved in sales there are so many things that we can read about so both the husband and the wife should be hard working and take up the responsibility very carefully and build the finances and the next thing that we have learned from him when he came across an obstacle he started praying to god that's what we read in chapter 32 and verse 9 10 and 11 that we started with he says i was empty handed when i went but when i came back i had two groups he says you have been so faithful to me you promised me this and you have brought me thus far so again when there was an obstacle when there was something when there was a destruction going to come he goes to god and and he prays with the promises he quotes the promises that god had given him that's another thing that we should remember when we are praying for our financial blessings that's how god blesses us when we have when he pray to him all the time praying to and he remembered the promises that god gave him and he rece- he prayed till he received the answer He prayed till God blessed him. He prayed till God changed the situation. So that is how we need to pray to hold on to the blessing that we have received from God. So finances are very important in everyone's life and finances help us to uh, help others, be a blessing to others. and most of our problems are solved if we have the finances ready so financial blessing we must remember is very important in every family and to receive this blessing the first thing we need to do is hear from god and for obey second thing have a discussion with your family members and make the decision do not keep any secrets from them fourth thing that you should remember is do keep praying keep praying keep praying till god answers your prayers because the more you ask the more you receive so these are some of the principles that we learn from jacob's life let's learn these principles and try to follow them in our families so that god will provide financial blessing it's god who blesses us It's God who gives us the strength to get the blessing. So when we receive financial blessing, we must always be grateful to him and if you follow these principles, surely I tell you that you will have a great blessing. Shall we pray together that God will help us to follow these principles in our families so that we can avoid most of the problems in our families. Father, we come to you lord we come before your mercy seat father i pray that you will help us to learn these principles not only learn them but follow them lord as we father come before you help us lord to learn these principles and follow these principles and be blessed as jacob was Father I pray that you will remove every financial crisis from the families that are watching us today Father I pray that you will bless each of their family in Jesus name amen and amen
So you. Yeah.